officially at the midpoint of the Canada's tournament now. We just finished round seven today. So let's dive in and check out the games from today. There's only one decisive game today. Maxime Vacher-Legrav beats the leader, uh, Jan de Pomichy, and eliminates uh, Jan's one-point lead that he had on Maxime. But now uh, Jan and Maxime are now a full point ahead of the rest of the tournament themselves. So let's check out this nice game. Uh, and Jan is saying that he is not afraid to be able to fight people uh, with French, which has not been played a huge amount in uh, top-tier tournaments recently. But uh, this is uh, Jan's preparation for the Canada's tournament. He's played the French uh, in one game previously. And uh, like in that game, we roll out with the uh, win over variation. E5, uh, sensible move, gaining space. C5, uh, A3. And there are people who uh, can play bishop A5. And bishop to A5 is a, a weird move because then B4, uh, it's uh, typically regarded as a very, very good piece sacrifice. Main line goes C captures D4, knight to B5. The bishop has to drop back, and white will play F4. And this is regarded as a good pawn sacrifice for white, where he gets played. But So that that's a, a sideline here, but today uh, Jan goes for the main line here. Bishop takes on C3, B takes, and knight to E7. And here, uh, the most vastly most popular move here is green to G4. Just going uh, straight for uh, the g7 pawn, and now uh, castles um, is reasonably popular, but queen to c7 is very interesting. The poison pawn variation of the vinegar. Uh, queen takes g7, rook to g8, queen captures on h7, c captures on d4, knight e2, more or less force, since the queen is threatening to, to munch on c3, knight e2, and after knight b to c6 and f4, the game goes on, and it, it, it's a very uh, interesting and intense game for both sides, but instead of going for something like this, um, Maxime decides to go for h4, and it, it seems uh, really interesting uh, after uh, Alpha Zero's games have been published with a bunch of h-pawn pushing, uh, for both sides, uh, a bunch of people are starting to push their H-pawn, and that's already evident in the candidates. And Maxime's plan is to push the H-pawn as far as Nepo will let him, and that's uh, what Nepo lets him do. Queen to c7, h5, and now if Nepo wanted to get adventurous, he could play c captures on d4, c captures on d4, queen to c3, bishop to d2, and queen captures on d4. Which uh, would be very, very uh, interesting for both sides. Queen e4, bishop e2, uh, and knight f5, I believe, is the game was played by uh, Alpha Zero. If you don't know uh, what Alpha Zero is, as a uh, listener to the after party, Alpha Zero is uh, the, currently the strongest chess playing program in the world and has. Um, uh, come well known for its uh, very nice attacks against uh, extreme, uh, extremely solid defenders such as Stockfish, the analysis engine that we'll be using uh, throughout this tournament. So this is a very interesting variation, but uh, Nepo doesn't get greedy and he plays h6, uh, just stops the h-pawn, rook to b1. Uh, sensible move, puts the rook on the open b-file, uh, so Jan uh, closes down some of the influence, queen v6, and now finally queen to g4. And this has been played before, knight f5 has been played before, king f8 has been played before. And rook to g8, which is the move that Nepo played, is very, very rare. It has been played once, uh, as you can see on the screen. It was played between Matt Barbell and Kate Jaroche in 2017, and Bartel uh, won that game. This seems very interesting, and I'm not quite sure what to make of it, even though I've... I've seen it analyzed this game through, and all I'll say is it's something that I'd not be confident playing from the black side. Your your wimpy author, uh, sorry, your wimpy host would play uh, king f8. And... But anyway, bishop to b5 check uh, from Maxime, king f8, and there's the real opening novelty. 
this kind of weird reverse castling with the king on f8, rook on g8. Typically, the king would be on g8 and the rook would be on f8, but... This this setup, while not objectively bad uh, for Nepo, is considerably awkward, at least from your host's point of view. Bishop back to d3, and bishop a6, uh, Jan is looking to trade off this light squared bishop, which is typically a nightmarish bishop for him in the French, so he um, sees the chance to be able to trade it off. D captures on c5, bishop captures on d3, c captures on d3, and knight to d7. and this is very interesting uh, from Jan. He's not uh, afraid of C captures on B6 because uh, after Queen captures on C3 check and Queen captures on D3, he achieves a much more comfortable position. So he's not worried about Maxime uh, trying to grab material. So D4, Maxime, B captures on C5, and now Queen to D1. Uh, he, likely he doesn't want to play uh, D captures on C5 because that would uh, make his structure uh, on the queen side look rather ugly. So queen back to d1, queen a5, targeting uh, both the a3 and c3 pawns, bishop to d2. And this gives Nepo the chance to grab the a pawn, but if he does grab the a pawn, queen takes a3, knight e2, uh, covering squares uh, for Maxime, and this queen has really got to get uh, back into play somehow, so it's got to retreat, queen a6, castles, queen c8, clears some space for the rooks, but it's really hard to say who's better here. Maxime still has more space. Uh, his pieces seem positioned better. This reverse castling from Nepo still seems fairly awkward. Um, and even though he's got this nice outside pass to pawn, Maxime should be able to prevent him from pushing it too far. But anyway, after bishop to d2, Nepo declines the pawn, plays rook to b8, and knight e2 is played. Uh, again, a fairly standard uh, theme that we've seen in some of the previous variations, covering both c3 and d4. Uh, with the knight, and c4 by Nepo, and it's a very interesting move. Perhaps um, Nepo was down on time, and just thinking, thinking, thinking of what, what to do here. He spent about 30 minutes on this move. The principled move would to not be to remove this tension here, as it could be very useful for black, as Maxime will have to keep calculating variations of what if Nepo captures on d4 and such and such, but by playing c4, uh, Nepo shuts down um, most play in the center, and uh, I'm, I'm not sure that it's objectively bad, but it isn't really objectively good either for Nepo. So, castles from Maxime, another interesting idea for him was playing rook h3, uh, so continuing to support the h pawn and perhaps playing for an attack with knight f4. Queen g4 and the like. But castles uh, from Maxime, rook could b6, preparing the double on the uh, b file, maybe in the next 50 moves. Uh, queen to c2 and rook h8. This move does make a little bit of sense to your host here, but not too much. I guess the justification for this move is to prevent queen h7. Uh, but even if that happens, I, I don't see this, the big advantage for white unless he wants to sacrifice and try to break through. So rook h8, uh, I think it's a curious move from Nepo that wasn't needed. Um, uh, your, your venerable host thinks that rook a6, bishop c1, queen a4, queen d2 would have been objectively better for Nepo. Um, and then maybe um, having the option to play something like knight c6 or knight f5 uh, in the future. but. Anyway, rook h8, a4, and now the move that really strikes me as being strange from Nepo, king to e8. And I'm just not feeling that uh, for Nepo here. He's already played king f8, now he's going back, and he had played rook g8, uh, sorry, rook g8 back to h8, and now he played king f8 back to e8. This seems like a bunch of wasted time. And I'm not sure that king is going to be any safer on e8. If Nepo really wanted to secure his king and allow his rook to get into the game, he might consider f5 or f6 uh, at some point, which uh, was played later, and Nepo was able to play king f7. But if you want to secure your king, why are you, you playing this really ugly move 
king e8. So rook to b4 uh, for Maxime, preparing to double up on the b-file uh, now versus Nepo's never. And knight to c6 uh, from Nepo. Uh, he's attacking the rook on b4, but what he may have missed is that the rook can just be ignored. f4, and now if, if, if Nepo goes for it, knight captures b4, c captures on b4, queen a6. Maxime gets to play f5. And he really isn't down the exchange because this rook on h8 is coming back into play in uh, probably too long uh, to make a difference for Nepo here. Probably here you'd see knight f8 and b5, queen c8, bishop to b4. And the position remains uh, pretty ugly for Nepo. So instead of accepting the exchange, he goes back knight e7, and this is. Um, basically, uh, you give Maxime the free tempo f4, and now you're giving him the second free tempo to play rook f to b1. I don't think that Nepo's knight maneuver, um, worked anything. I know that he's played king f88, rook h8, d8, back to h8, but this, this seems to be a bit much. Uh, as now Maxime has doubled on the uh, uh, B file and played F4, uh, which could be very useful if he wants to play G4, F5, and bust open some. So, Nepo, probably seeing that he's made a mistake, goes out for F5. And, weirdly enough, Rook back to G8 uh, would have been probably best for Nepo here, very, very oddly. Uh, let's say rook captures on b6, uh, knight captures on b6, and something, but who am I to argue with Stockfish? Uh, rook to g8 back. Maybe best for Nepo here with a slight advantage for white. Uh, but anyway, Nepo played f5. Objectively, uh, in terms of a Stockfish point count, it's really not that much worse <laughs> than rook to g8, but... Uh, it was enough for Stockfish to call it an accuracy, which I don't really get, but who am I to argue again? So rook b5 uh, chases the queen, queen a6, bishop back to c1, trying to reroute this bishop to greener pastures, and now king f7. Nepo finally uh, can get his rook uh, over to the b-file, uh, but a very interesting alternative here for Nepo was g6. h captures on g6, rook to g8. And, again, the rook to g8 idea crops back up again as being a possibility for Nepo now that he's opened the g-file. Um, your host is suggesting line here, bishop a3, rook takes g6, bishop c5, captures, captures b5, queen b7, and trades on e7, when it could be anybody's game. Uh, again, it, it's easy for Stockfish to say who's better here. For humans, this could this could be much harder. But uh, anyway, again, another very interesting opportunity, g6 followed by rook to g8. King f7 was played by Nepo, bishop a3. Uh, finally gets this uh, lonesome uh, rook who is probably uh, suffering from social isolation um, back into the game. Bishop takes, king takes, g4, and Nepo... Uh, is suddenly faced with uh, his position being blown open, uh, especially with the move knight to d3 and pressure increases on f5. If he wants to grab the pawn, uh, f captures on g4, he'll run into rook takes b6, rook takes b6, rook f1, and now he, everything in his position is gunning for f5, say queen b7, f5, and Nepo looks rather busted because uh, Maxime is just going to crash through in the center. Uh, for example, uh, let's just say rook b2 attacking the queen f6. Uh, very, very strong. D captures, uh, allows queen h7 check, and Nepo uh, is pretty busted. So you can't really grab the pawn, so Nepo decides to trade on b5 immediately. A captures b5, rook captures on b5. And this, this looks fine for him, he's won a pawn, but... His position uh, is looking a bit more sickly for it. G captures on f5. 
capturing on f5 is really risky um, because this very nice pawn center that Maxim has and uh, a, a lot of pressure, queen to b4 is an idea, uh, bringing the king up, uh, knight g3, and he looks a good bit better. So Nepo probably does not want to capture on f5 uh, immediately. So he plays rook takes b1, queen takes b1, uh, e takes on f5. Uh, to go for a little bit of a different line uh, than what we've shown. Uh, but knight to g3. Uh, if if you grab the pawn on f5, queen e6 uh, solves a, a good deal of Nepo's problems. For example, queen b1, queen g4, king g2, and he captures on h5. While Maxime may still technically be better after queen to b4, king e8, maybe queen d6, queen h2. Um, Nepo is still much, much more in the game uh, than uh, what happened uh, in the game. Knight g3 and g6 again is a very, very interesting move. If captures, queen captures, king f2, a5, it seems like uh, Maxime is going to be able to stop the a pawn here and. As a result, he'll probably be better. Um, I, I won't go into the super disgusting engine line here after king f2. Um, so I'll just show you the end position here. It, it's pretty drawn, but uh, I'm not convinced that uh, this uh, quick line uh, given is best. So queen to b6 was played. Uh, and I'm slightly opposed because you just give this check for free. King f8, queen a1. Uh, Maxime's not interested in a queen trade because... When the queen's off the board, the, the a pawn assumes much greater status. Uh, and probably right now is best to start pushing uh, Nepo's friend Alfred, the a pawn, but not sure if it helps his position too much. 93. Um, Maxime is better, but Nepo is still fighting. Um, instead, queen a1, queen e6 was played, and now knight to g3 is very strong as. Threatening to pick up this, you're threatening to play f5, and it is, Nepo's position is taking a turn for the worse. Queen to g4 was played, uh, but king to g2, uh, Nepo has to start uh, making sure he doesn't fall behind on materials, so queen captures f4, queen takes a7, king e7, but he, he by now he's, he's more or less busted uh, with the, his king position and his awkward piece. Uh, awkward pieces. Queen a3, king back to d8, queen to d6, and d5 pawn is very weak already, and it's very difficult to defend it. Queen to d2, relatively best, but there is no best here uh, for Nepo. He plays g5, maybe crossing his fingers, uttering a prayer to Kaisa, um, but uh, H captures on G6, H5, and G7, and it, it kind of leaves me scratching my head on why Nepo went for the G5 lunge as the G pawn is gone, and th there's not much to do here. As even if you play Queen to G5, uh, Queen F8 wins pretty cleanly, as after Knight takes, G takes F8, Queen leaves uh, Maxime up a full piece, and. There's not much doing. So, queen g5 and uh, not really uh, helping his position too much. So, Nepo uh, decided to resign here as if, he, as if he tries checking after king h3, there's no more checks. And again, the queen f8 uh, idea is going to win him uh, the game. So, good game by Maxime. This uh, now pulls him into the lead with Nepo, but. Since uh, he has defeated Nepo head to head, he now has the tiebreaker, which could put some big pressure on Nepo later in the tournament if it comes down to him and Maxime in the final round. Uh, he may now be forced to win with the white pieces, uh, winning on demand not hard, uh, sorry, not easy in uh, top tier chess. So, a very important win for Maxime Vashir the Grav, and he now technically takes Seoul first uh, due to tie breaks over Jan the Pomishi. So let's check out some of the other games uh, from today. We have uh, Fabiano Carmona playing Vong Hao. 
and uh, we'd been asking if uh, Fabi would roll out the Petrov as black, uh, but here he's playing it as white. Um, Bung Hao has been playing the Petrov uh, solidly in uh, the candidates thus far. Knight to c3, a rarer move uh, from Fabi, but he knows what he's doing. He, this is evidently his preparation. Knight takes, d takes on c3. Bishop to e7, bishop to e3, castles, queen to d2, signaling that he wants castle long here. Uh, castles long, knight f6, bishop to d3. Solid development from Fabi here. c5, rook h to e1, bishop to e6, king b1, uh, guarding the a2 pawn uh, from the gaze of this bishop. Still technically theory here, queen a5. Uh, Fabi has played this position as both white and as black. Uh, so he's evidently very familiar with what he needs to do here. Uh, again, uh, queen captures a2, and queen a1 mate is threatened, so c4. Uh, queens come off the board. Rook a to d8 is the novelty from Vang Hao, but it makes sense. Uh, you want to push uh, push this guy. And f3, perhaps wanting to get an outpost for uh, his knight on e4, or taking away squares from Vang Hao's knight. Uh, b6, uh, g4... <laughs> Fabi thinking of attacking on the king side here. D5, the point behind uh, Vong Hao's novelty. He wants to push this guy. G5. And now one of the interesting moments in the game here is Vong Hao can initiate a capture fest with a D4. Um, it, does, it doesn't work, but it, it's a fun variation uh, to play. G captures on F6, D captures E3. F captures uh, E7, E captures on D2. E takes d8 queen, d takes e1 queen, and unfortunately for Vong Hao, Fabi can win fairly mundanely through queen takes f8, king takes f8, and rook takes on e1, winning a full rook, but he also has the more spectacular bishop captures on h7, deflecting uh, the king from defending the rook, so if king f8, you can pick up the rook with check, or if king takes a7, uh, we have queen to d3. King g8, and you pick up the queen, and now you are up a queen for a bishop, which is going to be totally winning. So while d4 very interesting, uh, probably not in Vang Hao's interest to go for that. So instead, knight h5 uh, was played, takes, takes, uh, knight e4, f5, trades um, on Passant, bishop g5, king f7. And we have a nice uh, stage of maneuvering here as Vang Hao begins pushing his uh, queenside pawns. After a4 from Fabi, we have another important moment in the game. Does Vang Hao want to capture on a4? It doesn't work, but for a pretty spectacular reason. If you capture on a4, uh, Fabi can play bishop takes f6. Uh, bishop takes f6, rook captures on d5. Rook captures on d5, and bishop captures on c4. This uh, pin uh, from Fabi wins him back the material and uh, leaves him just with a better position. For example, rook d8, rook d1. Uh, increasing pressure, king e6, f4, a3, b3, um, and it'll be difficult for Vang Hao to hold on to this guy in the long term. a5, knight e4, and Fabi is much better uh, in this position due to Vang Hao's uh, awkward pawn and piece setup. So Vang Hao does not decide to capture on a4 and decides to play a6. The trades trades knight f5 instead, bishop to c5. And we enter a pretty forcing line. Rook e5, bishop captures on f3, takes, takes d8, takes c5. Rook to d1, check, wins back the piece on f1. King a2, rook captures on f1, rook captures on b5, and c3. Material is equal, but Vong Hao decides to thrust in uh, this interesting pawn move to see what Fabi will do. Uh, capturing the pawn is bad news uh, for Fabi because of bishop to d5, check. King b2, rook takes f5. If you decide to capture uh, with the rook here, you, you can just simply capture uh, with the knight, and Wong Hao is still going to be much better. Um, so instead, uh, bishop takes f6 after c3, king takes f6, knight e3, hits the rook, rook f2, rook f5, check, 6, king to a3. Perhaps better was to play h4, but this game is already headed toward a draw. B captures on b2, king captures h5 from Vang Hao. h4 now, rook captures on c2. Uh, if you capture with the knight, you, you drop the rook. So king captures on c2, but now bishop e4. 
with check. Uh, king to d2, bishop takes f5. And Bobby not wanting to enter the pawn endgame here uh, with uh, knight captures on f5. And king captures on f5, which, uh, according to our nice uh, stockfish here, is uh, completely uh, winning. And thank you for pulling up endgame table base. It is conveniently winning for black uh, in all lines. So obviously, Fabi doesn't fall for this. He plays king e2, king e5, king f3, and bishop to d3. And there isn't much to do. The players agreed to a draw here. And... We pull up our table base, uh, both uh, king to g3 and knight to d1 are both uh, easily drawing uh, for Bobby, so they both know this, and they agreed to a draw. Moving on, uh, we have Ding Liren versus Kirill Alexenko, and I want to give these guys a huge credit as neither side uh, even made an accuracy in this game, so a uh, huge uh, shout out to both of them. Their accuracy. Unfortunately, at this point, accuracy uh, might not be helping either of them as they're both uh, a full point back of the field now, both of them together. So d4 was played, knight f6, and we have a Catalan opening from Ding, which he has played before, bishop to d2, bishop e7. Well, this may look weird, uh, White's bishop is slightly misplaced on d2 and likely will need to get re-maneuvered, uh, so that's the point behind retreating. Uh, bishop to g2, d5, all well trodden uh, Catalan theory here, knight f3, castles, castles, knight b to d7, queen c2, c6, bishop f4, b6, all very well known to both players by now, they're still moving more or less instantly, rook to d1, uh, bishop to a6, knight b to d2, rook to c8, and rook a to c1, knight h5, uh, likely still in their prep, bishop e3, Knight back to f6, bishop to g5, bishop to b7, and now uh, there have been two games where e4 has been played in this position, but here uh, Ding decides to play knight e5. It is his novelty, and now both sides uh, start to burn some time on the clock. Knight captures e5, d captures knight g4. Trades happen. Uh, knight f3 to guard the e5 pawn, f6, they get traded, bishop h3. Rook c to e8, and the game is uh, still more or less equal, and it will uh, stay that way through very precise play by both sides. Queen to a4, c5, and b4. C captures on b4, queen captures on a7, knight e4, so some nice trades. Queen captures on b6, knight to c3, rook e1. D captures on c4, a3, and now... Kirill does have a exciting alternative here to bishop to d5, which he played. Exciting alternative here is knight captures on e2. Rook captures on e2. Bishop captures on f3, because this bishop is on h3 and no longer guarding the knight. Rook captures on e6. Queen to g5. Rook captures on c4. Rook b8. Queen e3. Queens come off the board. b3. Bishop e6. King h8. And it's very interesting position. Hard to say really who's better here. Alexenko has this very, very nice uh, pass to b-pawn. But if Ding can stop this and consolidate, he is just up a pawn. So evidently Alexenko did not want to go for this. And he played bishop to d5, which is still perfectly fine. Uh, the game is still uh, very much within the bounds of equality. Queen captures to b4. Queen captures a captures. And now knight captures on e2 from Alexenko. The same tactic that we just showed earlier. Rook takes... Rook takes on f3 now instead of bishop takes. Bishop to g2 kicks the rook back. Rook ff8, rook to d2, rook b8, goes after the b pawn, uh, captures, 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 captures. Rook c2, rook c8, king f1, c3, king e2. Ding is running his king over to help support uh, his blockade on the c pawn. Rook to b7, rook d3, rook b2. And... Only one move, good move here for Ding, and he finds it, which is king to d1. Rook b1, king e2, rook b2, king b1, rook b1. And in this position, the players agreed to withdraw, as this will be a repetition fairly soon. Uh, back in this position here, um, if Ding did not want to play king to d1, he would have to play uh, the alternative rook captures b2, c captures b2, rook b3, rook c2 check. And now not... 
King F3, which loses horribly to Rook C3 check, takes, takes, B1, Queen. Uh, instead, uh, King to D3, uh, Rook captures F2. And after Rook B8 check, King F7 and H4, uh, Kirill most likely will not be able to promote the B pawn. And while he might be slightly better, it's still within the bounds of equality. But Ding evidently did not want to go for this line and played King to D1. And we have a nice draw uh, from both sides. Uh, finishing round seven. Uh, as of round eight, they will start uh, playing their opponents again. And this time they're going to switch colors. Uh, but we have still one more game to go through from the first half of the tournament. This is Anish Yiri and Alexander Grishchuk here. We have c4, e5, g3, c6, knight f3, and e4. Already fairly rare territory, even though we're just three moves in. Knight d4, d5, most common move here. Ding has played this line. Nakamura has played this line. Aronian has played this line. C captures, queen captures, knight back to c2. Knight f6, knight c3, kicks the queen, queen e5, bishop g2. Knight a6, castles, uh, bishop e7. And d4 is a known move, d3 is a known move, and f3 is a known move. Uh, the move that was played here, knight uh, to e3, is the novelty from Anish. h5 was played by Grischuk. Everybody seems to be uh, loving to push their h pawns today. Uh, d4 uh, was played on Passant captures. Queen to d4, and knight c2, kicks the queen back. Queen g4, bishop f4, trades trades, and bishop to g4, rook d2, stepping out of the way. Castles, d4, knight to c7, uh, putting more control over d5. Uh, a lot of trades will happen there later, but we'll get to that. Knight e3, bishop e6, and now uh, Anish decides to play d5 and uh, start mass trades. Uh, captures, 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 and... This nas move rook captures on d5 is very interesting, uh, but uh, it's not really a sacrifice at all because after c captures on d5, bishop h3, you're forced to play rook to d7, and uh, Anish will win back his material um, with at least an equal game. So instead, rook takes d5, rook takes d5, bishop takes, c takes, rook c1, king d7, rook c7, king e6, rook takes on d7. And it seems like Anish might be getting something here, but rook to c8 from Grishchuk. A good move saves his position, most likely. Rook takes a7, rook c2. And he now starts uh, putting pressure on Giri's pawns. Bishop to e3, bishop to f6. Uh, more pressure here and activating his pieces. Rook a4 takes b2, king g2. d4, and after d4, the game really just peters out to a draw really quickly. Bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes, rook takes. Check, 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 check. H4 was played, G6, Rook E4, King F6. And in this position, the players agreed to a draw on move 40. And that is it uh, for today, folks, for the games from round 7. We've officially reached the halfway point in the tournament, with the leaders being uh, Maxime Vashirligrav and Jan Nepomishi <laughs> at 4.5 out of 7. So we shall see how they do uh, in the last half of the tournament. And I am hoping for very exciting games in the last round. Uh, last round, we'll have uh, Nepo versus uh, Maxime. Nepo having the white pieces. Could be a battle of the two leaders and should be fun. So I'm already looking forward to it. Thank you guys all for watching the Candidates After Party with HSB. And now as the last act with our show today, we've got to go raid somebody. So. We've got to raid somebody. Let's see who shall we raid today. Lile uh, Kridze seems to be a fairly decent option today. So we'll be raiding her uh, momentarily. Thank you all for watching this episode of the Candidates After Party. And we will be back here tomorrow with more games and more analysis uh, from HSB on the Candidates.